Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Monday, July 1st, 2024 Berlin Select Board. With us tonight on my left is Joe Staub and Flo Smith. On my right is Tor Nelson, who is acting town administrator also, and Carlo Nuizel. Um, additions or changes to the agenda tour? I don't know. Public comment? Hearing none. Uh, Lord Road Development. Okay, we have uh, Lori Holt on the line. And Madeline, Madeline, are you part of this project? I own the property next door to it, so. Okay. Um, so I guess, Lori, you're the representative for the potential buyers? Oh, well, somebody else is joining in. Uh, I I am representing them, but I was just going to be a fly on the wall, and um, and Sky Ridgeway was actually going to be doing the presentation. Um, but I don't see that he's on the call yet. I can read you what he provided me for notes and questions that he had for the meeting on Monday. Um, do you want me to read that? Uh, sure, go ahead. Since he's not here. It says, um, I'm a member of a collective of a collection of artists and tech workers who at Lord Road wish to develop an artist retreat with some community spaces and housing for members of our cooperative businesses. We plan on clustering our structures in order to have as little impact on the surrounding ecology as possible. These structures would be off grid connected to the oh, there's Sky right now. So I think Hey Lori. Hi. So I think that he can take over. Um <laughs> and they they were looking for a presentation. So I started reading the letter that you sent me last week. Oh. You can take it from here because you're better than me on this. Okay, great. Hey y'all. Uh I'm Sky. Hi. Um I don't know what Lori's already gotten through, but uh I'm a member of a uh, collective of artists and tech workers uh, based in New York City. And uh, we're looking to develop a artist retreat um, with some community spaces uh, and housing for members of our uh, cooperative. And we're looking to do that at Zero Lord Road. Um, we plan on, I guess, to like kind of go through what our ideas are for this, our uh, clustering uh, of structures in order to have as little uh, impact on the surrounding ecology as possible. Um, these structures were you wanting to build uh, off the grid, uh, connected to um, sewage by uh, um, septic uh, well water and powered by solar. Uh, we're not planning on subdividing any of the land on the property um, into separate parcels to be bought or sold. Uh, so we, ideally, we'd like this land and housing to be collectively owned by the people that are living there through uh, a single legal entity. Um, we're hoping to also have a, a road at the front of the property that would lead to a space for cars to be parked. And then from there, have a, a walkable path uh, for people to get to the buildings. Um, we're planning on developing in phases with our first phase, focusing on uh, an initial dining hall and community space that would be around 5,000 square feet. Uh, and that would be towards the front of the property. And surrounding that would be a multi-unit dwelling that ideally would accommodate uh, from around six to 10 people. Uh, as of now, we're also discussing the idea of expanding the amount of housing that is available. We'd like to do that over time uh, at different phases. And while we do that, we'd like to continue clustering the buildings in order to limit the footprint on the area. Um, so yeah, that's that's a little bit about what our what we're hoping to develop. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions or what's the schedule from here, but I have a couple questions, um, but. I, I have okay. a question. Yeah. Um, is this, what percentage of the time is this occupied? Is this full-time housing? Is this just coming to visit a couple weeks a year? Like what, what's this, the plan for the usage? Yeah, we'd like it to be uh, a little bit of both. Um, some of the members of the cooperative would like to live there full time. Uh, and then we'd also like to have some housing that is available for people, uh, artists that want to stay sort of like a residency 
for longer periods of time. And when they leave, other people would come in and live there. Uh, but it wouldn't be off of like a rental basis. It would be people are uh, wanting to just stay for a time. And there's uh, ways of doing that. Um, but then there's okay. it's. it's Huh? So, so there would be somebody there 12 months a year all, all the time. It, it, there's always going to yes, be somebody pe there. People, okay. people would want to, people are, uh, okay. are planning on, on living there full time. Uh, okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. How far from the parking lot were you going to have your, uh, your residences and your housing in your community center? Uh, yeah. A lot of that depends on what, uh, how far away the uh, actual road um, that's there right now, uh, whether or not we could put the parking lot there, it, it's really up to um, regulation on that sort of thing. We're not thinking of a, a, like a, a larger parking lot, but just a space for cars to be put yeah. um, by the space. But there's a that um, Ad Zero Lord Road where we were planning on doing construction. Um, I wouldn't say more than Lori, can I ask you a question? Sure. Where we park, where we're usually going at the top of that hill, where that yeah. field is, and we walk towards kind of where we were chatting last time, what would you say that distance would be? Um, I tried to find a highway map online at, on the Berlin site, and it looked like right now the town maintains about 700, 750 feet back um, to just be on the, the only residence on, the, on, the, on Lord Road at this point and then it looked like a class four section continues for another couple thousand feet and i wrote susan baird um from the act 250 office to find out just again kind of when when they would start or how they would measure the road um that the road distance that would trigger an act 250 permit um, whether it would be where this, the road stops being maintained or where the public highway non-maintained actually goes. So I'm waiting for that. But um, it's a couple thousand feet up to like uh, this great big meadow that would be, that's already cleared, that would be an ideal spot, I think. Mm. Yeah, so, and your walking paths from the, how wide are those going to be? Uh, that's, that would be all just whatever the, uh, regulation is on that. We don't have specific plans for that kind of thing. Uh, I just wanted to mention that we wouldn't be having road access to each of the individual dwellings that would have parking spots next to their homes. All of the specifics on road width and, uh, length would be up to whatever, uh, is allowed with regulation, uh. I just wanted to see because that that's a, an important part of what we were hoping yeah. to plan uh, around parking. Um, yeah, it seems to be an R40 zoning district, but of course, the way they envision it, it wouldn't actually be subdivided into a bunch of lots. It would be more of a campus with multiple mm -hmm. dwellings on it. Related I guess to I have eight, two concerns. Um, you know, the first is. Um, Scott, you do understand what a class four road means, uh, that, you know, the town really doesn't provide any maintenance on it, no winter maintenance, no plowing or uh, sanding or anything like that, and only minimal uh, summer maintenance, uh, you know, just to maintain a bare minimum accessibility. Uh, my second question is our, our fire chief is here. He's a member of the board sitting across from me. And I'd like his uh, his uh, thoughts. Just, I know it's just top of your head, but what are you Top of my head. Uh, how do you feel about not having an uh, emergency response available for your residents up there? I mean, because that's, that's what, if we're talking about parking our vehicle, not our vehicles, but you're going to be parking your vehicles. You have a uh, couple thousand feet or whatnot and walking paths. Um, that's not necessarily conducive for EMS or fire or anything. Yeah, and let me, I'll, yeah, let me, let me actually just clarify that. What, uh, what was mentioned before about the, what do you say, uh, 1200 feet of road that is stretching up. We would like the road to be, reaching as, as close as the property, basically what we're hoping is uh, the road that reaches to this larger meadow where we'd like to uh, build the initial dwellings and uh, community space and other, the other structures. 
we'd like the space for cars to go to be re- very close to uh, that cluster of buildings. We just don't, uh, we're not, we're, we're hoping to not have it where each of the dwellings as, you know, if, if, if we expand from there to have to have individual uh, single right you know, right. car spots next to them, it's, we, we're not planning on having, you know, parking at the at bottom of this giant hill and people are having to walk up to the housing just to <laughs> clarify you know yeah we're, we wouldn't want to do that for fire or ems or any of that kind of thing we'd like it to be as close as possible to where uh housing would be it's just that uh you know with a normal like you know a, a suburban kind of cul-de-sac it would be a road that then stretches off each road has a, a space for or cars to be parked we're trying to do something a little more different where cars would be parked in a specific area that's close to the housing but not each you know you don't drive up to uh the home in in one car um if that if that clarifies that question there i, I hope i hope that makes sense well it, it kind of clarifies the, the fact that maybe the ambulance wouldn't be able to reach those buildings um i th- i i believe that like our our plan uh i think if that's part of the regulation um that's what we're trying to figure out here so having an emergency road would be emergency road to the uh, structures that isn't uh, only for parking um, would also be, I guess, something that we would need to have to add to this. And maintained year round or, yeah. okay. Well, only if you wanted insurance too. I mean, they're going to yeah. require yeah. that the fire trucks can get back there. And get back down. Sometimes that can be tricky as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's the big question is you need to have, ac- I mean, I assume you would want access to those. I'm not sure if it's required, but like you said, it's required for insurance and much of the regulations technically require that, do they? But certainly it's something you want to have. But with the zoning, the way it is in that in that zone is 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 having multiple dwellings on a 200 acre parcel like that, if they're clustered, even a consideration, if they're not being all subdivided out, it's more of a, like I say, if a campus or retreat than um, your traditional neighborhood. I mean, I honestly, I, I don't recall that section of the zoning. I am on the DRB, uh, but, but the issue is really more about it. I mean, I don't, think there's it it, because the ownership would be a a one entity and um we do make provisions in the zoning for things like planned unit developments and tiny homes and and that kind of thing so i'm i'm assuming that that they would be allowed um without much i don't but i can't can't give you the specifics around what the requirements are I don't know. Okay. You've been in contact with uh, Tom Badowski. Yeah, he would be the expert on that, Laurie. Okay. Uh, we've, Madeline, we've had, we've had a few discussions by email with them, but we'll we'll try again. I, I mean, I'll just add that because when we redid the zoning regulations, we did want to allow for large parcels to be so the the homes could be clustered so that it would preserve the land around it. So mm. I can't see a scenario where that's not allowed, but I, I don't remember specific zoning districts if there was any limitations. Oh, okay. But that's something that we contemplated and, and we're wanting to encourage uh, when we were writing the, rewriting the zoning regulations, so. Yeah, uh, what was the name that you uh, mentioned to figure out the exact specifics around this? Uh, Tom Badowski. He's our zoning administrator. He's been oh, okay. on some of our email strings. So oh, far. yeah. Cool. Okay, great. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you. Uh, Madeline, did you have any questions? Uh, hi, I'm Madeline. I own the 130-ish acres, like basically right adjacent to the property that we're talking about. Um, and so kind of like when you go up to that hilltop where you're talking about that meadow, that's kind mm-hmm. of like really close to our planned home site eventually we we're very very early on in that stage so haven't really ventured into a lot of the details but um first of all i guess it's good to introduce myself to you second of all um i guess a question i would have i don't know if you mentioned this but like how many houses are you talking about 
Uh, for our initial phase of housing, we'd like to have uh, either a single or, or two um, multi-unit dwellings for around six to 10 people. Uh, it wouldn't be six to 10 individual buildings. We'd like to build uh, multi-unit buildings. Um, so the actual structures would be around two to three because of the, uh, as well as the, um, in, including the, the uh, community and uh, dining hall. Okay, and timeline for that? What were you thinking? Um, oof, I mean, that's kind of what we're trying to figure out right now with these situ with these meetings. I, I would say as, uh, as as soon as we can start with these kind of things. Um, I, I wouldn't have the I want to say five years, uh, but that is completely just just to be clear. I'm I'm not uh, 100 percent sure on the, that kind of stuff. Okay, awesome. And I don't know if you can share this information, but will you own that property or? Is it going to be like leased from Carol Lawrence or how? Yeah, it's 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 uh it's owned through uh a, a, an an entity that are are cooperatives. Yeah. Okay, so it's already been sold. No, no, no. I'm saying we would when we're we're trying to purchase it right now. We're trying to figure out if our plans are are able to be uh, executed. Okay, awesome. Thank you for answering those. And yeah, just as a course. point of clarification, Madeline, are you the people who just did all the clearing on the land off Murray Road? Is that your access point? Uh, our access point is Murray Road. We didn't do the clearing. Um, a former logging company did the clearing, and we obtained the land from them. Okay. Oh, okay. And then Madeline, also just just for you to know, uh, the because we were just on the property on Friday, the where the clearing is that meadow up there. We're building actually a, a couple, a, a couple of like fields down from there. So it's not actually that one right next to where that clearing is. Just to just to clarify. Um, yeah, it sounds good. Cool. Thank cool. you. Yeah, it's great to meet you. You too. Oh, Matt, Jameson, you want to? Uh, we also have Matt Levin here, who is one of the owners at the bottom of the hill on Lord Road. Yeah. Uh, my, my wife, yeah, my wife and I. Uh, so, Matt Levin, um, just to peace, um, uh, here as a neighbor. Uh, so, we own the property. Uh, it's a 146 Lord Road. And I'm happy to talk with Lori as the local person. Uh, Lori, my contact information is on the town website listed under Justice of the Peace. Happy to talk to you about um, some of these ideas. And this is probably not the right place to have a conversation, but happy to uh, talk with you or the folks from the uh, group anytime. Uh, just uh, drop us a line. We're happy to, to chat. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Thanks so much. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Anything else on this from anyone? I think it sounds interesting. Yeah. Good. Very good luck. Yeah. I had a couple questions if there's no other sure. concerns on this kind of stuff. Um, is it cool if I go ahead with those? Go right ahead. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was, I, we were wondering if there are any uh, particular regulations on um, uh, whether or not each dwelling has to have a specific amount of parking. Um, this kind of goes with the question before uh, and is maybe a little too specific for right now, but uh, is, is that part of any of the actual zoning stuff for each dwelling to have a certain amount of minimum parking? Yes. But it's flexible. Yeah. It's flexible, okay. And again, our zoning, uh, when it changed, went in favor of less parking. So I don't think it's onerous. Okay. Um, and then uh, kind of along the same thing with oh. what we were talking about of having... Oh, sorry, what were you saying? My bad. Oh, um, just to kind of go along with... You were talking about parking, and, and I was more talking about access that yeah. access is is written in the zoning as far as width, width and height clearance. Oh, I see. Okay, and then kind of along with that, uh, I was going to ask is um, to have because uh, you were mentioning to have uh, to get insurance and then to um, for the road access for emergency services. Does uh, each dwelling, even if it's a multi unit or if it's individual dwellings. Do they have to have direct road access, even if there is parking for cars? Like, do each buildings, each dwellings have to have road access, regardless of where uh, parking is? I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm gonna, okay. I'm thinking yes, but I don't know okay. the answer to the question. I mean, okay. you can't, you're not gonna, a fire truck can't be 50 feet away. It has to be like right as close as it can, right? I mean, I'm chosen the right. a fire, but um, yeah. So, and an emergency responder, you're going to want to, you know, they're going to want to get into where the emergency is. So, 
logically, I, I I would say yes, but I don't know what it actually says in says in the regulation. Okay, cool. Um, and it could be a private road and not to town, not a town maintained road. Yeah, that was my next question. Right. Yeah. Well, I think um, there are limits on residences on private roads. There are yeah, three. Three. I thought it was five. Five. Well, I think the was like for the but the thing it is is if this is a if this is a communal setup, then you only have one entity there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's something for the lawyers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something for Tom. Tom, Tom can answer all these questions. Yeah. Tom would be able to. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I guess my my last one it might also be for Tom, but it's around. Uh, do you know that uh, if we would have to have a, a second point of egress, uh, if there were less than 10 units during this initial stage? Because, um, uh, yeah. It sounded like that letter addressed that a little bit that I read that was in the package that Tom wrote to you. Didn't he? Yeah, he said it was a town road. So he didn't, it didn't sound like he would require one. I okay. know Barry Town does. Um, but. Okay, I just wanted to check and see because I, I wasn't think sure. That with the changes or something, there was. I think over a certain cause, number. Because I think, I mean, because we have a lot of cul de sacs in town. Mm -hmm. And I think in the latest revisions, the intent was to, to get away from that. That, you know, my road, you know, I'm on a cul de sac, could not be built under the current standards now. Oh, I'm not and sure. I think maybe even yours. Mm -hmm. So. I don't recall that piece. Tom, Tom mentioned I don't quite remember what he said. Mm -hmm. He would definitely have more knowledge and be able to give you more feedback on that question. Yeah, about and the right answers, I'm guessing. So, <laughs> okay. And I'm making it up. So, <laughs> <laughs> the zoning, I mean, yeah, he he's interpreted the zoning regulations more than I have. So, definitely talk to okay. Tom. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I, uh, I think that's it for our questions. Uh, now, unless Lori, do you have any other uh, other questions? Nope, you did a great job. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, great. Bye. Thank you, Sky, Lori. Bye. Yeah, thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Uh, moving on, uh, setting the tax rate. Question: Did you guys start early tonight? No, no. I logged in at six. I was wanting to make a public comment, and you were already to the Lord Road tax. Do I need to wait for two weeks? Well, we can we can uh, take it ahead right now. Okay. Um, Brett Collier, I uh, I've been watching some of the planning meetings and the select board meetings over the past few months, and yep. we've been we've been talking about uh, ice rinks and basketball courts and skate parks and wanting to spend money on that. And I was home two weeks ago, and a year after the flood, the ro the the road still hasn't hasn't been repaired. How how is it that we're looking at spending money on a whole bunch of different things, and we still haven't? It's been over a year, and we ha still haven't fixed that road. Which road is this? Oh, hey, I'm sorry, Payne Turnpike. That's a permitting issue. That's that's. Plan. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's just getting through the process on paint turnpike. The money's in place for paint turnpike. It's just a matter of getting through the engineering and permitting process. Engineers are very, very, uh, I'm sure as you probably know, Mr. Collier, engineers are very tight supply right now. And, uh, you know, finding them with available um, time, that's not, the, what, that's not the word I'm thinking of, but... Uh, time in their schedule, you know, for all these, you know, because every town, you know, was, was hit by this. So um, engineering services are a premium right now. You know, it's just getting through the design and permitting. And, and of course, the state process is not easy to, to get through. So if that's the, that's the delay with the road. Okay. It, it was disappointing, I guess, when I saw that it was still shut down and no one's trying to fix it yet. That, yeah. You know, people on the ground. And just and just another point to make, and most of the other projects are look we're looking for grant funding. It's not it's you know there may be some match by the town, but it's primarily taking advantage of grant funds to do those types of projects. Okay, well I I didn't know that there was money there, and it was some other reason, but uh, <laughs> that's why I'm making the comment. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, there's a lot of frustration around that. You're not the only one. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <laughs> Mr. Collier? Not tonight. Thank you. Not tonight. Okay. <laughs> um, setting the tax rate. Give me the good news, Tour. No. Well, the good news is the municipal rate is not going up that much. Point oh nine percent. Twenty percent. Point oh nine. Point point nine percent. Point nine. Less than one percent. Yeah. And and just there's no um, downside to using the funds this way, or well, I mean, once it's gone, it's gone. So, but if, yeah. you know, at this point, if we haven't identified other projects for it, um, yeah, you know, without. I'll say getting extravagant or um, say wasteful. I mean, we can spend the money, but it's just something that we really need versus this, you know, using it directly against the tax rate. This is the last year we can do that. So, yes. you know, moving forward, then we'd have to put it for a specific project, which would have to identify prior to December 31st anyway. Yeah. Um, so I think it's reasonable. We we had already identified uh, the fifty five thousand yep. uh, for the police cruiser for ARPA funds. Um, the use of the reserve funds was for the loader and paving reserve from prior years, and so you know what, what you're asking about is the ninety eight thousand in the undesignated. Well, no, like the loader and the paving. So we're not going to. That's no. That's not going to be able to be purchased. Is that going to? Is that, I mean, I'm assuming, right? I'm sure. We're using loader the loader money for this. So then, what happened? No, we got we got we have reserved funds for the loader right. and asphalt separate from the ARPA funds. So how it looks on that sheet? Yeah, it looks like it's flying down the, the, the revenue together. So that's going to go. Okay, so that's not we're not buying down the rate with that money. That's just no. oh okay. No, I thought that was okay. That's right. what it looked like to me on the. Yes and no. I can only. Use, I know I can only use the new card using, for one year. But I'm using the new card. We're using. Yeah, I mean, we're buying. We're, we're <clears throat> buying down the rate by buying a loader. We're buying a loader. Okay, so so this isn't. Design. We're not using these funds in lieu of buying a loader. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. I have paired back. Some of the anticipated revenue, especially in their licenses and fees, um, from the uh, Tim Clerk's office, um, that came in quite a bit on the budget last year uh, for like the copier and birth mm -hmm. certificates. Marriage certificates was way above budget, so apparently, well, was in the air or something like that that. People decide to get married, but um, I took a rather conservative um, approach to estimating the licenses and fees. I, I feel better about doing that. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could have gone higher and gone with a lower tax rate, but I just, I'm just not comfortable budgeting for a higher amount in those licenses and fees. Um, pilot payments, I backed off on that a little bit from anticipated. Um, Current use from state is just a little bit under what we received this year, um, but not much. Um, so, you know, our total budget, including the special appropriations and fire department is $5,076,033 um, using non Property tax revenues comes up to $913,961, um, which leads that we have to raise $4.1 million by property taxes. Our grand list came up a little bit higher at, uh, at 5443296, four, which gives the tax rate of 0. 0.7647. Uh, last year it was 0.7574, so 
the difference on a $250,000 house is $18.25. That's good. Mm -hmm. For the municipal rate. And so I will make that motion to approve the point seven six four seven. And I second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Well done. Hearing none. Uh, what? Go ahead. Just going back to the undesignated ARPA funds. Um, and we don't have anything, I shouldn't say. We, we still have other reserved funds. Okay. Doesn't, uh, uh, obligated, let me put it that way, obligated. Next year when we don't have that. We would, well, the, the the flip side of that is, if you remember, we built 400000 into our budget this year, today being the start of this year, mm -hmm. for flood damages. So, which is almost 10% of our budget overall. So, we won't have that, hopefully, next year. Hopefully, we we'll, won't have another flood. So, yes, we're using, well, we're using ARPA funds. We're also going to have lower expenditures and maybe parallel support me on a economic development person. But, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> have to throw that in. But so um, the amount of revenues is down, but also anticipate our expenditures to be down. Okay. Did, can I ask what it would be you, are you talking about the 98,000? Yeah. How much would the tax rate, how does that affect the tax rate if you take that out? We're looking at 0.9, 0 0.92. Is that? Instead of the 0.56 or 0.7. Is that real? Is that what I just took? Is it what? From what I told you. I think that's what you told me. Well, I wouldn't go <laughs> I'm just curious what that eighteen dollars would look like if that wasn't in there. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I've seen other boards, I guess, use reserve funds, and they get to an end where they don't have the reserve funds, and they just can't continue that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now we have this huge jump in taxes. And it's, yeah. Well, based on uh, based on the education, we're still going to have a huge jump in taxes. It's yeah. not going to be on. <laughs> so I, I am in favor of it and keeping it as low as possible, but yeah. I'm in favor of using it for this purpose, given that it's the last year that we can, <laughs> everything is so expensive and I'm sure many people are having a hard time paying their taxes. I think now is a really good time to do it this way. <laughs> what, Callie, have you seen any great jump in the um, delinquencies? No. Actually, with the last, with the first set of certified tax sale letters I sent out, I think I started with five or six, and now I'm down to two. Great news. That I mean, I got a lot of people at least starting to pay some of those back taxes. So good. And that's the great thing about us here in Berlin and you folks is we're willing to work with people. Yeah. So having that communication is so important. Yeah. You guys do a really good job with that. I think the end of July, what we fought on the warrant was 211,000. And that's from 12, 2012. Mm -hmm. That's right. With most wow. of it being this year. Taking out, not using that ARPA, uh, the taxes on a $250,000 house would go up 60 bucks versus 18. The only thing there is you'd have to have someplace else to put the ARPA. Yeah. In. Right. So it has to be used by the end of this year or by the end of the fiscal year? It has to be dedicated. It has to be dedicated. dedicated. Mm -hmm. Then, what, after um, January 1st, you have two years to actually expend it. Any other comments on this? We also sure. did get the state education tax rate today as well. 
So that don't hold us in suspense. So for Homestead, it went from 1.7343 to 2.0108. And for non Homestead, it went from 1.6182 to 1.9242. That's about 16%. And what's that going to do for a $250,000 house? Put us on poverty. What did you say? Six, six, fifty, seven hundred ish, somewhere in there. Hmm. Um, Thank you. Any other comments on this? Do you want to see it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. If not, those in favor of the missile rate as it stands here before us? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Well, it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to live in Berlin, but it <laughs> costs you a leg. Yeah. <laughs> you waited all night for that, didn't you? George? <laughs> I've been waiting two years for that. <laughs> I, will, I would have done it last year, but Diane wasn't here that night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Emergency Watershed Protection Program Construction Bid Award. Uh, so last meeting we opened up the uh, bids. We received uh, 10 bids. And I'll get our engineer Fitzgerald uh, review the bids and did up a comparison between them. Uh, he narrowed down to a short list of three. Uh, Jay Merrill, K. Bellavant, and Hogan Excavating. Um, he felt all three were um, responsive. They were engaged in the um, pre-bidding process, uh, site visits, uh, inquired of him for uh, questions and everything. Um, I, I know I've heard from all three of those after we awarded bids, uh, asking for the status. Uh, Hogan actually came in at the lowest at 77500 and I move to accept that bid. You need a second? Okay. And this is, uh, I might give me a second. Before I'll second anyone. for a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say here again, this is um, reimbursed through the National Resource Conservation Service. So this is a grant we have that'll be providing this funding. And the the engineer felt like the bid was reasonable because there are some areas where they're way different than the other yeah. Correct. two. Correct. Yeah. So okay. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries. That's a question, Carly, because we were questioning that. Yeah. Okay. In progress. Um, <laughs> Should I say it again? Uh, emergency Watershed Protection Program. Not for just Let me say it in the market. Uh, FEMA reimbursement loan resolution, some story note. Legal matter. Seeing um, Sanders Trickle and sent out today. Should that be on the agenda that's not printed? Um, so. Um, so we are running low on cash uh, with the next installment not coming due until middle of August at this point, six weeks. Um, so, and we discussed it at the last meeting, um, borrowing $800,000 from the, uh, sewer fund, the water pollution fund. Um, we've checked with FEMA. Um, this is allowable. Um, this is reimbursable by FEMA. Uh, so I recommend that we borrow $800,000. Uh, to cover cash flow uh, from the sewer fund at a rate of 4% uh, for up to one year. Um, 
because we have not paid the school tax yet, and they are wanting their money. So I move to adopt the resolution and authorize the chair to send a promissory note. Your second? I second the motion. Any further discussion? The interest rate at 4%, will FEMA reimburse the 4%. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's great. So the bank rates we were getting is like 5%. But, well, Wasn't we got that? two rates. Yeah. In the, above 5%. Yeah, 5.6 5 and 5.9. Yeah. Or 5.4. So, yeah, around 5.5%. You misunderstood me, Tor. How much will FEMA reimburse? Four <laughs> percent. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments on this? And they and they said they would reimburse even though it's an interfund loan. Okay. Loan. Excellent. Very great news. Any other comments on this? No. Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, update on the Boyer and FEMA buyout closeout. So. There's quite a few documents in your packet on this. Um, Look at these names. Thanks for being here. Thanks a lot. Um, this is a project that started quite some time ago. Um, property in Route 12, 4519 Route 12. Uh, there was damage and was participating in the FEMA buyout. Uh, the project got stuck with their bank. They are on, um, uh, there's a lien on file in the town clerk's office. Um, but the apparent lien holder has been unresponsive as far as providing any um, closing amounts or anything like that, that we can close and, and pay off the, the loan. Uh, so this project has been extended several times uh, with no resolution from the bank. It's, it's my belief that, I don't know how much it still goes on, but about 10, 12 years ago, um, <clears throat> excuse me, mortgages were being bought and sold you know, and, and paperwork didn't always keep up. And at the end of the day, banks were trying to foreclose on, uh, on a mortgage that they had sold, you know, three or four different times. And nobody, I, I think that's kind of maybe the same situation that this bank doesn't actually hold the, uh, the lien anymore, but they've never cleared it off. And the new bank has not uh, stepped up to say, yeah, it's ours. So um, VEM has closed out this project uh, as of uh, June 24th. Uh, they are no longer you know, interested in pursuing this project. Uh, so we've identified the homeowner that, um, you know, this, this project is now closed and the property is going back on the tax rolls. And the previously delinquent taxes are now due in full and possibly subject to tax sale activities. Um, so we do get to, we did spend some money on attorney fees and an appraisal title search, which uh, the state will reimburse us uh, for those. Um, so you know we will recoup our money on that, but. As far as this project itself, it is it is dead at this point, and uh, without. So what I'm thinking of. Without prejudice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. um, meaning that um, if the owner's interested in applying again. He can, they will consider it, but he goes basically goes back at the bottom of the list at that point uh, with all the other buyouts from the you know July floods and everything. Now, this is the one that's just down there um, just before the old Valley House, the Valley House. 
usually the red box. Oh. Yeah. Moira. So that's <laughs> that's one with all the two max that's hiding the building now. That's yeah, that's the property. Who's can we collect taxes from the lien holder? Well, um, I doubt it because the lien holder says it's not them, but yeah, they won't release it. But I'm, I'm going to fax them a copy of this letter and the because because you've already sent him the first tax so no to send them some to the. Okay. Lien holder. I mean, I don't know what it's going to do, but uh, you know, realistically, the property itself, I don't think is has much. I mean, the taxes are about thirty thousand back. The liquid taxes, but yeah, maybe a little over thirty thousand. Maybe one of the neighbors might be interested in expanding their holdings. Well, that's that's cool. I think about the best case scenario. You know, the only thing I mean, I'm looking, I'm thinking of the property. There's not that much land with it. Half an acre at most, I think. Yeah. So. The lien holder. Is it TD Bank? Yeah. That's the one stated on the mortgage? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. I thought maybe it was somebody that got bought out 15 times, so they didn't recognize, you know, that it was still the same entity, but it was just a different. Right. But yeah. TD Bank isn't. It's not TD yeah. So no action on that, just uh, information. information. Okay. Um, the new public records law requirements. So I have put a couple of documents in your packet. One is the um, uh, briefing from the um, from the league on this new stupid law. Um, basically, it permits advisory boards. Uh, they can meet totally electronic now without a physical presence for a meeting. Uh, so that would be like the planning commission, um, conservation commission, rec board, uh, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, all other non-advisory bodies, uh, select board, development review board, public works board, um, board of abatement and civil authorities. Um, we have to wow. record our meetings, either video or audio, and post these recordings in a electronic location for a minimum of 30 days. Now, it's not really a, an issue with us since, you know, we have the ORCA recordings, but um, and I know the Development Review Board meetings are recorded, but it's this electronic posting for them um, that we do have to work out. Well, I'm just curious to work. What would it cost to have Orca do those meetings also? I don't know, and, and I don't know if they really even have the capacity because Orca used to record the DRB meetings. Yeah. And I and, and I just and I asked because I want I noticed you hadn't been doing that for yeah. a while. And I asked Tom he goes, well, they, they, aren't, they aren't able to do that anymore. So and that, was, that was his response yeah. to me. So but I know they was it they were charging. When they first started, I think they were charging. They still charge. Yeah. Then there's a there's a cost, and you get hours, you get whatever that is. How many meetings a, a year or whatever? Sure. Go ahead, talk. Go ahead, Joe. You almost called him Tom. He did. <laughs> I caught him. Um, you have Zoom. Oh, uh, you got a Zoom account. You you can record it. Take that recording. Do your postings. You don't have to worry about having an outside right. entity videotaping because now right. we're just doing audio. And it's that was the same thing. And, and, and if you're already paying for that, which is $170 a year, whatever that might be. Um, 
Well, my question is, where do we upload it to? Well, but can't you just post the file when you post the minutes? Can't you just put the video file? It takes. I've tried that. And it takes forever. I tried doing it with the DRB meeting. Is that because and of our website? Or? I don't know. It. I never did. Actually, I never could get it to upload. I or your patience. But anyway, no, it wasn't that. It was. It was like I, it took like at least an hour. Oh, okay. Uploading. Can now, we get a YouTube tried, channel? Well, I tried it on YouTube also, and oh. it and it failed for some reason. Um, you know what? You know what I, I you know ended what I... up doing is using a file transfer service called Smash, and I uploaded it to that, and that seemed to work pretty well. But I, I it's know... another step. It's another stupid step that we in the town we don't have the time for. I would recommend asking Tony if there's an easy way to do it because Tony's really good with that Tony. stuff. Tony Snow, planning. Oh, okay. He he did, he's worked with the mall site, you know, the town center site, and I mm. think he might be able to tell us how to do it okay. a little easier. And then maybe it can just be done in house. Uh, then there's also uh, two other documents. Um, I just turned it up today. Uh, general information that we need to post on our website and a complaint form to have a Annual training requirements on select board chairs, town managers, and chairs. <laughs> Anything else on this tour? No, uh, no. Um, let's see here. Clearwater State Revolving Fund authorization. Um, so to update our document with uh, the Clearwater Clean Water State Revolving Fund and Drinking Water State Revolving Fund, uh, just update our points of contact with them. So I recommend <clears throat> uh, Tom as our primary author primary representative and Craig is our secondary um, due to the fact of my time is short with you guys. <clears throat> and I will make that motion. I'll second. Any other discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. Warrants and approval of that. I'll make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24 28 for payroll from June 16th, 2024 to June 29th, 2024, be paid on July 3rd, 2024, in the amount of $62,264.60 and payable warrant 24G28 with check number 24056 to 24095 in the amount of $139,930.71. Second. Any other, any comments on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 This motion carries, uh, minutes. So you have three sets in your packet. You have Monday, May 20th, 2024. Your motion on Monday, May twentieth, twenty twenty four. 
and make the motion to approve the minutes of Monday, May 20th, 2024 as presented. Your second. A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Second set is Monday, June 3rd, 2024. Make a motion to accept the minutes of the June 3rd uh, select board meeting as presented. Your second. Second. There's something like that. The board returned and and there's no more language. <laughs> I don't know if something get cut out. Oh, yeah, it's just the table. Tabled. Until the next meeting. We want to just amend the motion to add table until yep. the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And I'd move the dicky dam to the top of the second page, just the heading. Okay. Motion on the. So do we have to amend? Do we have to vote oh, to amend the, first? You want to bring the, the amendment? I I I accept the amendment. <laughs> okay. So. Um, motion on the minutes as corrected? As corrected. Is that your motion? Yes. Hmm? Do I hear a second? Second. Any other comments on the Monday, June 3rd minutes? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And the last set is Monday, June 7th, 2024. Mm -hmm. I'm going to approve the so Monday, June 17th, 2024 minutes as written. Second. Any other comments? Those in hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, round table. Hello? Nothing tonight. Thank you, Brad. Carla? Joe? Um, okay, thank you. That's all. Sure. The... German counselor from Berlin, Germany, is coming to visit us on Friday, August 9th. So keep that date open. We'll be planning some activities for her. And uh, I don't know if you know Jeremy Hansen, when he was on the select board, uh, took a delegation of students to Berlin, Germany. Oh, wow. Um, and met with them. I don't know. 2016, 17, 18, sometime around there. So nice of them to uh, Can you react to the favor. Reach out to Jeremy. I was going to reach out to him. Yeah, invite him. And other people will have to get him some. Uh, here's some maple cream pie from the wayside and some other things. So we'll keep that date open. 
Wonderful. Um, the like historical, August 9th, yeah. I invite the Historical Society uh, for them to be interested in knowing about how we got our name and everything like that. Interesting. That's very nice. <laughs> anything else to her? Uh, no. Uh, executive session. Uh, I move that we enter an executive session for personnel under 1BSA 313A3. Second. Second. <laughs> Second. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we enter an executive session for personnel under 1BSA 313A3. Second. 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 Second.